my God, that is a huge coral. <laughs> Holy crap. Good evening, everybody. It's currently Tuesday and we have some really nice weather coming in, finally. We've had such a rough stretch and we're finally gonna get a little bit of rain, it looks like. Uh, they're not really sure how much and it doesn't really look like it's gonna be a lot, but hopefully it'll be enough to make the herping better for at least a couple of days. Part of the reason that I think that this will help out even if it's not a lot of rain is because whenever we have a, a front move in that brings rain, it keeps the overnight lows a lot warmer. So instead of the high 30s and low 40s that we have been having, the overnight tonight is like 64. So we should be able to night cruise a little bit tonight, assuming that the cold weather that we had earlier this week hasn't scared stuff into becoming inactive. So I don't really know what to expect, but I'm gonna get after it and hopefully we'll see some snakes. All right, our first snake of the evening is a very small one. So small I had to turn around for it twice before realizing it was actually a snake. A little red-bellied, look at that guy. Normally these guys are super abundant in the fall, but I think because of how dry it's been, we haven't been seeing as many of them as normal. As you guys can see, the sun is kind of starting to go down already, so hopefully there will be some after dark movement tonight because so far this has been the only thing we have seen. We've only been at it for about an hour and a half though, so I am cautiously optimistic. And right at dusk we have a garter snake who is already very angry with me. <laughs> What's up, dude? Very nice. Hopefully that is a good sign. The stuff's gonna be out. It's actually been a minute since we saw the red-bellied snake. Look at this, he's really given us a de defensive posture here. It's kind of interesting. All right, <laughs> look at this thing. Dude, you don't have to poop all over yourself. I just want to get you out of the road. And there we have a little copperhead. Look at that. Very nice. Wasn't really expecting to see one of those. Okay, with how cool it is, but I'll take it. Very nice. Bright little tail, as they do this time of year. Move around to the safe side. It's a little harder for him to bite me from there. Very, very sharp looking little snake though. It seems like stuff is moving all right, at least here at dusk. So we're gonna see what we can rack up. Hopefully there will be some more stuff out. We have not had many opportunities to night cruise in October this year, so I'm gonna try to take full advantage of this and keep moving and connect with as many snakes as we can, so. And here is another red-bellied snake. A little bit bigger than the first, but very similar looking. It's been a minute since we saw the copperhead, but it does appear that at least a few things are still moving, so. It's 8.30 and I haven't seen a snake in about 30 minutes. Uh, I think we got that last red-bellied snake just before 8. And uh, I haven't seen anything since. It's down to 63, which is the coolest it's been so far tonight. So I think I'm going to call it here unless I see something on the way home. And of course, we'll stop. I'm really hoping we're going to get some rain tomorrow. Potentially even some rain overnight tonight, which could make for a really interesting day tomorrow. So I'm going to cruise my way home. And if I don't see anything, I will see you guys first thing in the morning. Oh yeah, it's a super dreary overcast morning and uh, I'm okay with that because I think it might actually rain today. We're gonna go cruise around for a little bit before that happens though and hope that stuff is moving. It's super humid first thing this morning and it feels warm already, but it's never going to get hot today. These kind of flatline weather fall days, they can be some of the best. So we're gonna get to it and see what we can find. Oh my God, that is a huge coral. <laughs> Holy crap! I gotta go get my hook. Well, that is exactly what I was hoping to see today. And oh my goodness, I have worked so hard to see one of these this year. <laughs> oh my God, I'm just so excited. Look at that. Holy crap. First snake of the day at like noon. It's so awesome, look at it. It's almost super dark. I've been really wanting to see a coral this year but the weather has just been so dry and uncooperative that it took until mid-October to finally find one. <laughs> but that is just fantastic. Incredibly gentle venomous snakes compared to our vipers, but quite energetic until they're calmed down. 
the coral snakes in this part of the state are just so different looking. Really, really crazy. Look at this thing trying to bite my camera. <laughs> They're docile, but they will certainly bite. Jesus. Look at that. I have never seen a coral snake do anything like that. That is kind of spooky. Look at him. Look at him. I'm not even touching this snake. He's just getting my camera. <laughs> that is so awesome, though. Look at that. What an incredible snake. Did he leave any venom? He did. He left a little bit of venom on there. You can kind of see it. So I got this guy off the road, and I'm taking some quick photos, but he's sitting kind of still right now, even though his head's not visible. But look at this weird band right there. Isn't that cool? Just double yellow, almost like it skipped the red band there. It's, but what a snake. This is probably the biggest one I've seen in this area, maybe 24 inches, something like that. But they can get quite a bit bigger. And you can see this one's quite dark. I mean, I, I pointed it out earlier, but his red is not very bright, but his yellow is just stunningly bright. I think what he's doing here with his tail is kind of like a, a head mimic where he tries to draw attention to his tail rather than his head. But just a fascinating snake and something that I've been hoping to see all year long. I've made so many trips out of this area. I've had a lot of luck turning these guys up in the past in this area, but it's just been so dry this year and we haven't had many days they're kind of coral snake weather. Right now it's actually drizzling on us. Um, hopefully it won't actually rain because as long as it's drizzling, I think we actually might have a decent chance of seeing another one. So I'm gonna get some photos of this guy and we'll get a little bit more video before we leave him to his business. But beautiful Eastern coral snake here in the Georgia Piedmont as our first snake of the day. All right, this guy is sitting nice and still at the moment. So here's another look at him before we move him into the woods. But just wow, what a stunning snake. You almost can't even see the red coloration in certain lighting just because I guess you can see it a little lower down on the body, like right there. But just wow, what? I don't even have anything to say about this, but wow. It never gets old seeing one of these guys pop up, especially in this habitat. I mean, this looks like my backyard, basically, and I'm only 45 minutes, maybe closer to an hour from home. And, uh, yeah. Deep into the Georgia Piedmont, there's just a healthy population of coral snakes. Really, really crazy. And when I first started looking for these, if you told me that I would actually have success finding them, then I never would have believed you. I just love them so much. I love their attitude. I love looking for them. They're just one of my favorite snakes. So awesome. But when they're out, they're out. And I'm hoping that we might can get multiple today. The weather is absolutely ideal for it. So I'm going to escort this guy over there to the forest. And we're going to keep on road cruising. Fantastic. All right, the rain is picking up a little bit, so I'm not sure if we're gonna be able to find anything else, but we'll cruise around a little bit longer and see. But either way, I'm perfectly happy with how today's gone. That makes my month. So this is the habitat he was heading towards, and I kinda wanna get some video of him just crawling off, if you will. It's hard sometimes to get them to do anything but be twitchy and defensive. Go on. There he goes. All right, he's kinda figuring it out, I think. Go on. He's probably just gonna bury straight down in the leaves. That's okay. <laughs> just twitch, twitch, twitch. Go on. I think he's gonna go down in the leaves right there. All right. That is fine with me. We'll leave him to it. Eastern coral snake is our first and possibly only snake of the day with the amount of rain that's coming down right now. <laughs> so it's like, it started drizzling almost instantly after finding that snake, just to show you how important rain is for the movement of a lot of these fossorial species, which are oftentimes the things we're looking for, like coral snakes and king snakes and pine snakes. Their activity is very strongly correlated with rain a lot of the time. So if you hear me complaining about it being dry, this is why, because this right here is the reason we found that snake. Well, I guess we're not gonna leave just yet because there is a giant rat snake and I'm getting barked at by a dog already. Look at that thing, he's huge. Maybe stuff is just gonna move in the wet because it's just been so dry leading up to this point. I guess I'll do another pass and see if there's anything else out, but that's kind of surprising. I wasn't expecting to see anything else after it started raining, unless we got maybe another coral snake, but cool. All right, I'm gonna get this big guy out of the road just so y'all can see a little bit of scale. He is probably a solid five foot long stretched out fully. 
very thick too, very healthy. All right, big dude, no need to musk or bite. I simply want to put you over here so that you don't get hit by a car. Here you go. He did musk and it's gross. All right, dude, stay safe. All right, guys, well, we are just in straight up rain mode at this point, which is fine by me because we need it very bad. However, it is going to put a damper on the road cruising for now, but I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna go home and chill for a little bit and then go out tonight and look for salamanders, so. Good day, this might be the end of the snakes for this episode, depending on what we can turn up tonight, but I'm not upset about that. That coral snake definitely makes my month. It's one of the biggest things I wanted to see before winter, and we got it done, so. Yeah, I'm gonna go chill out at home for a little bit and wait for dark. Well, I'm still in my yard and we've already got three dudes just sitting out here in the driveway. Look at them. These guys actually kind of look like Fowler's toads, but I, I'm assuming they're probably Americans. All right, our first road amphibian is a giant American toad. That one's definitely an American. I can tell just by how big it is. Normally you have to look at the, uh, the glands there and the crest. But yeah. Seems like the toads are out in good numbers tonight, at least. Hey, what are you? Guessing tonight's not going to be super diverse, just based on the fact that we've seen nothing but toads so far, but I'm going to try to keep a tally. So far, I'm going to say we're at one species, because I think all of these have been American toads. And here is our first salamander of our first salamander walk of the fall. A nice slimy. Looking good, nice and sharp. A little bit small, actually. That's kind of like a juvenile sub-adult stage but species number two, slimy salamander. Go on. And here's another slimy. Looks like mostly we have the, uh, the late summer casts still. Haven't seen anything that we wouldn't normally expect to see in the summertime, and we haven't seen any of our fall breeders, and by that I mean our one fall breeder. The, uh, marbled salamander so that's what we're really hoping to see tonight i'm sure they'll be out in at least half decent numbers well it appears these are about the only thing out right now yet another slimy there we go there's our first marbled salamander on the road of the fall this is their breeding season now maybe he got the job done tonight and is heading back up into the forest but i'm not sure Either way, I'm just glad to see one. This is the main thing we were hoping to see tonight. So beautiful black and white coloration. A lot of times the females of this species are a little bit duller and the males are a lot more vibrant. And by that, I mean the white coloration on their back tends to be a little bit more stark when they're males and a little bit less contrasty when they're females. So I'll try to show you an example of that eventually. But for now, we'll get this guy to the road. All right, this will probably be the last one I show since they're everywhere, but here's yet another slimy. And right up the road is a D.O.R. Nerodia, so the snakes are actually out in this. Which isn't too surprising, considering the snakes we saw right before it started raining earlier today. Alright, marbled with species 3, and here is species number 4, a little copse gray tree frog. Another one of our more summer active species. Oh, Caitlin's found a newt. Alright, we'll get this copse out of the road and go look at species number 5, the newt. Alright, there we have... A newt. <laughs> Species number five, the eastern newt eft. We have been seeing these guys actually semi-regularly over the last couple weeks, which is weird considering how dry it's been, but this guy looks like he's headed towards the ponds where I'm sure he will be breeding this winter. All right, and right next to this guy, Caitlin has spotted a slimy who has very camouflaged at the road. Yet another one. Here is yet another newt. This one is a, quite a bit more vibrant than the last. We saw a couple dead ones too, so apparently there has been pretty decent newt movement tonight, so we'll get him out of the road. All right, so here we have a, I think this is a, a gravid female marble that looks quite thick, and it is that more muted gray. And then right behind it, almost following it, is this crazy looking dude. Look at that. That is a really cool marble. I'm going to take a photo of that guy. Here's these two side by side so you can see just how cool looking this one is. I've never seen anything quite like that. Both nice looking salamanders, but that one is just crazy. 
Well, I'm actually not going to take pictures because I left my camera battery on the charger. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> I got these guys set up and posed and then realized my camera's dead. So, cell phone photos of this guy it is, I guess. Really cool, though. And here's another little male. Very nice. He's headed also away from the uh, breeding ponds. All right, here's a big guy. That does look like a big guy. Super vibrant, contrasty looking. God, they're just such great salamanders. If these things were rare, I think people would regard them as one of the holy grails of U.S. field harping. But you could say that about a lot of our common species, like uh, red salamanders, spotted salamanders. All just incredibly beautiful and hard to believe that they're actually just things that most people can find in their backyard. At least if you don't live in the city. All right, here's another stately American toad. And right down the road, almost back to the driveway, is a, another beautiful marble salamander. This one's in a really cool pose. Look at that. Very nice. All right, we'll get these both out of the road. This toad apparently thinks I'm a hog nose trying to eat it because it is puffing up and inflating itself to make it look bigger. Look at this. Get out of the road, dude. <laughs> oh, the meat slap. Go on, look at this thing puffing up and pointing its broadside at me. Super weird. At last we have, oh, well there he goes. Species number six, the green frog. You can see he's got those textbook dorsolateral folds and that's how you tell those apart from bullfrogs, which are also quite common here in most places where green frogs occur. All right, here's another double. We got a slimy with a little regrown tail. <laughs> That's kind of funny looking. And then a little further up the way. Oh, there's two. We got a triple, another slimy, and a nice fat marble. Look at that. Very nice. And then there's slimy number whatever. Slimies have definitely been the most common salamander of the night so far. And another newt. That one is very pretty. Look at those red spots. How's it going, dude? There's yet another little marbled. This is not even an adult. This is like a two-year-old, maybe year-old salamander. Yeah, Hello, gentlemen. Goodbye. And here is another big, gravid female. You can see just how pudgy she is. And they're always a little bit bigger than the males, it seems. There she is. It's marbled salamander number like 10 for the night. Actually not sure if that's a female or not. It doesn't look super plump, but good looking salamander nonetheless. Look at you. Beautiful. You can see his uh, swollen cloaca region. Definitely a man. Like These guys might be catching up to the slimies. I'm going to do a total count and put it at the end of the video, but I might be showing more marbles, but I am pretty sure that we are seeing more slimies. I uh, have taken a voucher photo of everything, though, and like I said, I'll put a total count at the end of the episode. All right, well, the moon is starting to peak out. It's clearing up, and uh, I don't think there's going to be much more rain coming in until maybe later tonight, so I think we're going to call it here. It's been pretty good. I'll put the salamander totals as an overlay on uh, this frame. And we're probably going to wrap up the episode here. It's been a great day. And yesterday was decent too. At least we saw at least half decent numbers while night cruising for the first time in a while because it's just been so cold. But anyways, going to wrap this episode up here. It was fantastic to see a coral snake today. And it was great to get our first salamander walk of the fall in tonight. So thank you all so much for watching. And I will see you guys in the next episode. So this is a really cool way to end the night. This is a trap door spider, I believe, on my driveway. I was just explaining how it's really weird that now that I'm suddenly trying to get a little bit more into spiders and learning more about them and being able to identify them, I'm seeing these cool spiders everywhere when normally it's the opposite of how that works. <laughs> like when I first started getting into snakes, it took so long to ever find any snakes, but now that I'm getting into spiders, I'm seeing stuff that, and maybe it's just because I'm paying more attention, but feel really lucky to see this guy slash girl tonight. Really interesting way to end the night. I'm going to identify this guy and I'll try to label him properly, but very cool.